Hi everyone, I'm Joy Pickard, German audio engineer and guitar player and today it's again all about the PRS MT15. In my last video about this amp I measured the output power of the full power of 15 watt settings and we found out that it can put a lot more watts out than the um, developer told us. Uh, today we're looking at the 7 watt setting, I think it's 7 according to the data sheets and we're going to have a look if it's really that value or if it's higher or lower and we are going to look at the distortion spectrum and compare it to the 15 watt settings so we can get a nice overview about all the power amp constellations that we can get out of this amp and if there is any difference from the lower to the higher watt settings in sound and in performance. So let's find out. Okay, I've disconnected my guitar and rewired here everything so we can start measuring. But at first I want to tell you how it is connected. So let's have a look at the flowchart. I'm generating a sine wave with a software that is called Arta. Um, we will have a closer look in a second. The sine wave that I'm generating is 220 Hz. It's uh, one octave higher than our lower E string on the guitar. It's a nice frequency to measure with because it's not too high and that uh, aggressive in the ear if you measure with speakers on. And it's not too low that you won't hear anything because you don't use a subwoofer, you use a guitar speaker. So it's good audible and nice to measure with. If you want to do it perfectly and accurate, you have to use one kilohertz, but um, the amplifier is producing a wide range of same power over different frequencies, I know it, and we can use the lower frequency here. Okay, the frequency is then re real and analog generated from the UED Apollo Twin USB interface and is arriving this knobless AB switcher with volume putties and I'm using it to adjust the volume because the PRS don't have a master volume after the effects loop so I need to adjust the volume somehow so this one is connected. After that I'm putting the signal into the effect loop and then we're passing the power amplifier and the transformator after the signal is amplified. After the power transformator it is getting out at the back side on the speaker connectors and I have not connected speakers, I have connected a dummy load and this dummy load with 15 ohms as you can see is here this 150 watt resistor on a heatsink. Okay, what can we see with our instruments? At first I'm measuring the input sine wave that we can see here. This is before our volume adjustment. And then on my second channel I'm measuring the voltage that is on the dummy load. And I'm also at the same point taking the signal that is on the dummy load back into my audio interface so that we can analyze it in ATA. And this is it. So this is ATA and we can see here a spectrum from the typical audio frequency spectrum from 20 Hz to 20 kHz and down here a total harmonic distortion value that is at the moment at 100% because we have no signal back from our sine wave so the software is thinking everything is distorting. Okay, now we can start. The PRS is set on 7 watt mode so the lower wattage setting and I'm powering on right now. And here we can see and hear a bit the sine wave out. The knobless switcher is not muting completely, it is uh, passing through a bit 
sine wave. Let's have a look at the settings. We have one wall per division, so at the moment we are getting one, two, maybe three volts peak to peak out of here. Yeah, here we have the value peak to peak, 2.9, it's okay. So let's turn up the volume. There we go. I'm now at 5 volts per division, so we have 10 volts peak to peak. Up, up, up. It's a nice sine wave. It's looking pretty good and pretty undistorted. Okay, what do we have here? 15, 30 volts peak to peak. Ah, there we have it. Here we can see the top and at the bottom this is the maximum output power because there is the limiting value for the tube to operate in um, not distorted uh, behavior so in typically its working condition um, and turn it down a bit again and so here we are nice and nearly at the corner at the edge so let's take that value we can see here one, two, three, so this is 15 volt. Let's have a look, this should be 18 volt peak. Yeah, the, the half value of this value, so 18.5 maybe. Yeah. Let's note this. Your peak is 18.5 volts and let's also note the total harmonic distortion which is at 2.75% 2.75% THD Let me change the range here Okay, you can see this peaks here and if I'm turning it down the peaks are getting lower faster than the main dominant frequency that is generated and put out from my frequency gen generator so you can see the harmonic distortion spectrum and let's now push over the point where the power amp is distorting so we have this flat top and bottom and you can see there is generating a lot of change. We have, I don't know, I can see it from here, maybe the, the third harmonic is getting lower, but other ones are getting higher and higher. And there is the third back again and getting higher. So you see there is something happening in noise shaping or in sound shaping when we push to the edge. Okay. I turn it down and off. Okay, at first, of course, everything, everyone is interested in how much power it is on the lower wattage setting. So we can calculate with the formula formula that I use in my other video, and it is P for the power. Then we take the voltage and we have to take the RMS voltage root mean square voltage then we have to square that and divide it through the resistance of 15 ohms of our dummy load so let's do it and at first we have to calculate URMS and URMS is calculated what when you take uh, the peak voltage U peak and multiply it with one divided by square root of two. And the square divided by fifteen ohms. Okay, let's start and 
I'm showing you the result in a second. This is 18.5 multiplied with 1 divided by square root of 2. squared and divided with 15. Okay, and we have 11.4 watts. So it's like the full power setting, the amp is delivering more output power than we expected or the data sheet is telling us. Okay, now that we know that, let's have a look at the high wattage setting and compare both in sine wave shape and distortion spectrum. I change to the high watt setting. Okay. Turn on the amp. I need to get one lower to 10 volts per division here so we can see it. Okay, 10, 15, 18. At this point we had our flat top on the low voltage setting. And there it is on the high watt set, wattage setting. So like in my other video oh, already done, here is the maximum output power. It is at around 26 to 27 volts let's get a bit down here so like in the lower voltage setting we are just at the edge and let's have a look oh what is happening here the total harmonic distortion is much higher it's not the flat top that is causing that distortion it's the working of the higher and lower half wave of the power tube in the high wattage setting you can see it's not a nice sine wave as it were in the lower wattage setting so this is changing the sound and we had at the lower wattage setting at the same adjustment 2.75 um, total harmonic distortion, percents of total harmonic distortion and here we have 4.43 so this this is much more what is the reason for that? there are two reasons at first with a higher voltage the completely the phase inverter circuit is maybe operating a bit different because it is putting out higher sine wave amplitudes. This could be a smaller reason for it, but let's turn, turn it down so I don't have to talk again this noise. Um, the main reason is this switch back here is switching not a resistance or um, a dummy load that is taking out the half of the power it is switching the operation character of the power amp tubes so we switch between pentode mode in high voltage setting and triode mode in low voltage setting and this is a major change if you have ever played an amplifier with an pantote preamp you know that this is absolutely a different amp um, pantotes are meant for being powerful and yeah have an absolutely different uh, operation curve than triodes and producing a completely different harmonic spectrum when they are working this is caused from the operation curves that they are producing while they operate in their pentode or triad mode um, 
if you play this amp and you play it on a lower wattage setting you maybe have the feeling that is not that tight and aggressive it's a the preamp is totally aggressive and it's totally nice creamy chunky high gain distortion but the chunkiness of the power amp the chuck i would call it is not that nice like in the high voltage setting and this is not because the amplifier is having more power this is because of the triode and the pentode mode triode is typically used more often in blues amplifiers and jazz amplifiers maybe or not jazz in, in blues amplifiers where you have want to have a, a warmer and creamy um, not that tight and dry power amp and this this is you have to live with it if I use the amp on a low volume setting I like to use it on the high wattage setting and turn on the volume and if I can't turn on the volume enough then I use something in the effect if X loop like this one and I turn on the volume much more than I can use the amp like I'm used to okay that's everything for today I hope you had fun watching I had fun building this stuff up for you and measuring it and if you want to see more stuff like this then leave a comment what I should do next if you like to see me um, analyze the preamp of this uh, rectifier for example then maybe I can do it so just leave a comment leave a like and nothing more have a nice day nice night see you next time Bye.